for me that 08 and that whole rivalry I think it's nearly summed up by that iconic Joe McMahon roaring in Tommy Walsh's face yeah. I, I wish I was close enough to, at the time to get stuck into him in the middle of it but I never got there but I remember it came off a turnover and I remember looking at Joe McMahon doing that to some of the Aussie rules boys uh, a few months after that out in Melbourne and I was kind of like going they had the edge that's what it is that's what defines it The Jameson Castmates and Tonics Social Serve Series on Off The Ball Well boy sitting across the bar from you, I used to look over at you and want to take the head off you at times. Uh, the Kerry-Tyrone rivalry was epic really in the noughties. Uh, what summed it up and where did it start for you? Uh, I know it was, for me personally, it was probably the rivalry between us. Was, it was great because I think there were so many good players. Mm-hmm. I think in every position there was always a battle. Yeah. And, there was, like, and every, every man had his own story in it. You know, <laughs> like there was always like maybe you and Joe with Mahan. Uh, Tomas, t- see Tomas and Brian do her going up, and I think it was it was class. But for me, maybe I know where probably were kicked off probably, and it, it whetted my appetite for it was maybe probably the '86 final, and maybe we didn't get it. We were deep, we were leading by six or seven, and then it kind of uh, should have been oh, a free to plunk it. The father used to have. I tell you, the, the, the VCR tape was gone was gone greyish. Do you know the way it'll go grainy back in the day because we'd watched it, rewinded it, watched it, rewinded it. And the famous one was the penalty and, and the, the, the choice that was taken to, to tip it over the bar. Which, to be quite honest with you, if I was manager now, I'd probably be saying, this carry team roll, tap it over the bar, we're, we're going well. I think it was, I know, probably. There's the juggler talk, but if you'd have missed the penalty and Kerry had gone up and got a goal, it'd be, he'd be, you know, it'd be. It'd have been, it'd been yeah. oh, look, he took, it was, it, was one of them, it was one of them decisions, look, and you, you kind of live by the sword, you die by it, and he took it. And, but probably at that time, Kerry, they might have been maybe coming to the end of it, but they were still, they were still a fantastic team. Like they were still, a, they had still a lot of men that knew how to win. Yeah, I know. I was below in, <clears throat> in Tralee with the old man who was Berra originally, but lived in Oma, and he showed me that tape on rewind. So I'm sure it was being watched a lot in Tyrone. So I'd say when you got your chance in in that famous, that famous game in 2003, where I was in the crowd, you know, you'd been on the team a few years at that stage. We'll say the build up to that game and how good how good Kerry were 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 perceived to be. They'd they'd won the All Ireland ninety seven, they'd won it in two thousand, they'd been blown out in that famous game in two thousand one by me. Then you had the Armagh one where, you know, we felt again like he did in eighty six was felt we should have won that yeah. All Ireland. And then you go to two thousand and three and it's all teed up nicely. Tyrone are coming, Kerry are coming to town, and gimme your gimme your 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 build up into that game, and you know we all know that what happened. But give me the build up to what was talked the week before it. We probably for us for the week before it. We were kind of going in, and we were kind of we probably thought that it was looking on it that we never really probably we were coming down the line of no respect, and maybe that was hard maybe for us because I know at the start of the year a lot of pundits whatever were all saying thrown are kind of an under twenty one team. They're a good youth team, and they were harking back maybe. We got beat by Sligo the year before. Yeah. We were lame enough getting beat, and they were saying they don't have it. And we felt maybe that Kerry probably wouldn't respect it. We, we watched the videos and we watched what we thought, and we watched our game, but we thought probably this was their time to shine. And we thought for us to get any respect on the on the on the on the country stage, yes. we had to beat Kerry. And plus, we were confident because. Probably you look back to '97. We air miners and a lot of the boys playing in that there beat a very good Kerry team, and it it went to a replay. Well, I think it was the final, was it? I'm not too sure, but we beat and air boys took an awful. They took an it was an All Ireland semi final and they took an awful. Sink them. Look, they're not that different. The aura. We were coming off air thrown on the twenty. The air on the twenty ones was coming off maybe. Back to back, there were 2000 All Ireland winners, 2001 All Ireland winners. Mm-hmm. So we were kind of going, look, we've pedigree here yeah. coming up. And plus two, we knew ourselves, we had, we had Brian Doher, we had Peter Canavan, and we said, we've enough armory to take these boys. And we said, the one thing that we thought that Kerry didn't really like was being tackled. Mm-hmm. So we put a huge emphasis. We said, wherever they move, we're going to tackle them. And he says, we're just going to work and we're going to hound them and tackle. And because we knew Kerry were phenomenal footballers, but we, at the same time, we knew if you give time and space, you boys would kill anybody. So we were determined to make Croke Park as small as possible. Kerry came back in 04 and 
kind of almost in our case kind of a sort of dominance again it was grand yeah. but we we kind of knew look we didn't get tyrone and you know uh you 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 know a massive tragedy above with um Carmack, god rest him and uh you know we knew that like you know that was obviously very hard to take for you as players as friends as family as as tight as you are as a group so o5 for me was always um was always going to be a kind of a hopefully that this Kerry yeah. and Tyrone team meet and we got it in the final uh, and I think that was you at your best that was probably us at our best and we were kind of I know after and it, was, it always it always it always reminds my mind you mentioned no four final I was watching it and I think there was a your chairman at the time he had maybe said um, I think everything's in order now and football, football's back where it belongs, you know, and we were kind of going, and I mean, Mickey had brought this up, this was the start of the year. You're the king of the cutting out the clippings, like, oh, and it's just, out, it's like just, if you're going to a fucking Kerry chairman, about what a chairman said after a game, what hope have the players got when they do an interview? No, no, go on, go on, no, you no, cut no. it out in a way. He said that normal no, Arbor was resumed. Normal, he, said that, he goes, I think Kerry was back and football was resumed, football was back in, like, and we were kind of going, like football, football hasn't. She, like we were kind of going. Well, it's not our fault. Kerry haven't adapted. Yeah. For the football and yeah. like thing, our whole year now we had the Cormac God rest him and we knew ourselves like and, and the players and all and Cormac himself as a player, we would in 04 we never we never linked in it. We never said look it was a mistake. Like it was this year we we wanted our we wanted our best. So we said look we knew ourselves. We chatted about it as players and we said look we've kind of we kind of underperformed in 04 and we never use that as a crutch and we says. Because Cormac would never want us to use yeah. it as crush, and we says, "Look, he goes like to respect him. We we'll have to get him that second medal." Yeah, and that was probably it was in the background of what we were doing, but then the foreground, Mickey was kind of he was prompting us that it. this is stoking it, and I think the player says, "Right, we can go on." I think we've we clashed in the league a couple. Of, I think we were down in Killarney. I think I think the Gooch, and I kind of knew the rivalry was going. Maybe when we were wondering, and Gooch scored a goal, and I think he. Usually he would spin and turn away, and I think he sprinted back towards me, and, and he gave me a he gave me a mouthful, and he jumped up on my face, and I, at that stage, then we go, this was a rivalry, you know, this was a big, and you could feel it, you could feel it building. And I'd say that might have been him giving a bit back, though. I'd say he might have gotten for a good few minutes off you first. I'd say no, 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 no. As you know, you see, I always get the blame for stuff like this. Here, stop, I always get the blame. Stop, no, stop. Well, uh, this isn't. No, right. I mean, well, I'll get on. Just turned off here. Because I think the chart will be zooming up zooming here up. at the moment. But no, look, it was, and then you kind of, you kind of sense that it was building. And we, as, as we always looked at you, and we says, look, they're the team they're beating. Again, we'd always go back to the respect thing, and maybe they were thinking us a one-off and going, but we were determined to get back that year. And like we knew we had our mad a beat, and we knew this, but. We always focused on ourselves, like, but uh, like 05, we says, right, let's do this, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, and like the depth of talent you had then, so you, like, right, you tackled, you were ferocious at the back, you were spiteful, you were spiteful as a defence, you wouldn't give anything away, you were in our face, it was, it was intimidation. It was everything you want, it was toughness, it was all, all the things you want in a good back six. But you good midfield, and then you had these boys up front, Stephen O'Neill, Peter Canavan, Muggsy, Doher, like um, McGuigan. Like, when you talk about all-time great teams, that 05 team, put it up on the wall, put the, put the names up, and I, I would say you wouldn't fancy, you wouldn't be shy going into battle with any team of any era. Including no. these boys that are going for five in a row this year, the Dubs. Yeah, look, it was, a, it was a good team, and then at the same, at the same respect, you look at that Kerry team. If you put that 05 Kerry team up, and the names up on it, and you would go, and I was just watching the game maybe a couple of months ago, just just for him pack, and you forget maybe you kind of went, oh, he was playing, and you kind of go, he was a savage operator, like, yeah. and you go, and then you see the subs that were coming on, you're kind of going, both teams. Both teams had had a phenomenal yeah. squad and phenomenal like, and it was coming through, and I think probably like it was it was a crazy it was a like it was just the game of football. All I mean that day, and I I was marking the gooch, and maybe after 10-15 minutes he was flying. And then you sent Pecky out to him. 
No, Paki, Paki's his own man. <laughs> <laughs> Paki can do whatever oh, he wants. Oh, no, he's the order came in. Paki, will you walk and start out? Small Foxy fell in there and turned <laughs> forward. Give Rice a bit of a hand. <laughs> but then I turned around and I was kind of going, this is a, this is a, this game, and it was great to play in. And I'm going, I says, this is games playing at a phenomenal rate. Yes. His pace and going, his movement, and we were kind of struggling a little bit, and then we got that goal just before yeah. half time when, where Muggsy and Peter worked in together. It was a fantastic finish, and then I think once we kind of got ahead, yeah, you got were into the rate, we, we, we said, they said, we used to always kind of be trying to get ahead of you because it had just forced you to come out and play. You like you were obviously the kings of. And you're right, we had to adapt after a while because in 2003 what you came with was kind of, it was the start, you know, it was the start of the kind of a different type of tactic rather than what was going on for 30 years previous, which was fellas catching it and kicking it down the pitch and made the best man win and made the best team win. Whereas you were going, well, I know a minute we can maybe drop a fella here, tackle a bit harder here, push him down this side. That 2005 final, I was in the bench. I played full forward for the club that summer in, in a few games in the championship and played really well. And Chris Lawn was coming out, and I met him above at a gig above in Cookstone at Muggsy. Uh, and I was saying, Jesus Christ, you're a lucky boy that didn't bring me on that day inside the room, the edge of the square. I said, you came out, you were looking like Coo Cullen back there catching ball. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I huge, I, was, I wasn't, because I never f fancied myself to be good enough to be a carry full forward, including 2005. Yeah. But I always remember the end of that game kind of going, either me or Quirky. I was yeah. kind of going, it was kind of like that three or four point game. I was kind of like going, I always wish Jack would have thrown one of us in. Not that we would have caught the ball and got a wonder goal, but you know what it breaks to come off big fellas in around the house and you need to get a lucky break when you're, when you're coming up against a, a kind of a, a, a situation like that where, you're, where your backs are to the wall and you have to pull something out. Um, but like looking back at it, you deserved that All Ireland. You were the best team um, that year and. You know, I think it was a real, as you said, a real testament to what happened, uh, unfortunately, in 2004, that you were able to do that for, for the community and for, for that team. That game in 05, obviously, looking down uh, as a, a sub, slash fan, slash impact player, slash whatever I was going to be. Um, you went at Gooch hard, but like you are, you know, you were known as this tight, sticky cornerback, in your face cornerback, but you never got enough credit, I felt, for how good you were going forward. You always made the right decision when you got forward. I think I don't ever think you forced anything. You kicked your points when you were on, oh, yeah, yeah. you went on and you gave it to the scorers. You were a good decision maker up there. When you were going in against kind of Gooch, and we knew how skillful he was, and you knew you were going to get a bit of help as well, you knew you were going to have bodies yeah. coming back. What was your what was your mindset? Was it more, I'm going to get in and tackle him and turn him over? Or are you going to mess with his head and try and throw him off his game or a bit of both? What was your... Uh, look, probably looking at the Gooch, I don't think Nahan would ever phase him, you know? Yeah. So I kind of knew there was absolutely no point trying to do that. Nothing, the, yeah. Nothing yeah. out there. Basically, I was just trying to be as physical as possible with him. And I knew myself there was no point diving in, no point trying to tackle the ball off him because he does that... Uh, he was that dummy with the bounce. Yeah. And he said he could make he could make you very foolish. And I just planned to stay with him as much as possible. And if I won it and he had to give it off, that was that was because I knew he was fantastic going on, on the loop and he was going around, I'm sure. Like you and him, when you got into the team, the mm -hmm. two years seemed to have that telepathic link. Yeah. And I was when it came in in 06, 07, you could see the, see the way the two used could, used could play off each other, could work and he could make a run and play you a, a diagonal ball and it was something that really added when you, when you used came in but yeah. I, I, my just mindset was basically the stopping from playing and stopping, it was very hard to do and I came with the mindset of going, I'm up against a great player mm -hmm. so I'm, he's going to score. He's going to get his few points. But so if that's all he gets, I'm doing a good job. That's all right. Yeah. And I think maybe a lot of other boy, a lot of other people were like, and you had the backing of Mickey, and he said, "Look, he's going to score." He goes, "Forget about it. Just see Lambert to score." Yeah. And I went in with that attitude, saying, "Right, if he scores three from play, fine. And he score if he doesn't, if he's if he scores forever from from freeze, whatever." Yeah. And he goes, "Because I, you've the, probably the mindset of it." If you limit the good players from not scoring from play as much as possible, it takes away from the team. And we had went and said, right, he's going to score nice, but there's times he can stop a player like that. And as you said, I knew we was going to have men funneling back to support him, to put yeah. the pressure on him. That's basically the mindset I had, because I knew I couldn't, I couldn't, you, everything goes over his head anyway. Anything you are chatting him, 
he's a laid back, he's going, so he's not going to worry. He wouldn't have understood me anyway, out in the field. And 08 was the run where, you know, I said to myself, we 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 get them this time now. This is this this is this, this is our this is this is our time to to bury this to bury this. Sword probably and probably going into it. Probably, I'd say probably our squad probably wasn't as strong. Maybe if you're if you're going on names alone, if you're going on names, well probably would have helped. Probably would have helped us. We were probably we were probably more uh, together. Probably if you know like we knew maybe we didn't have maybe the. We didn't have Brian McGuigan at full pick. We didn't have Peter Canavan. We were just maybe, but what happened is we gelled maybe together as a team and we knew probably we, we had to work harder and smarter. And at the back of our heads, probably in 08, going into that final, we probably had the motivation of stopping Kerry one and three in a row. And we had no one, and yourself and Tommy Walsh had yeah. the Twin Towers, had, yeah. had formed, a, had formed a, a great relationship with the Gooch, with the Gooch playing off and then you had O'Sullivan centre half, you had uh, Galvin. You had so many yeah, we were players. Well set. We were well set. You we were, were well, well set. I think mean, tactically we got it a bit wrong on, on, on the day. I think we, we forced it long, which in hindsight, like looking back in it, yeah, we, me and Tommy, and we were going well with it, and it was great. But Tommy was actually brilliant at going out, winning it in front, and turning and taking fellas on, which he would have caused you trouble with. But we actually lamped a lot of ball in early in the game. Yeah. You were getting breaks, and I think it it almost fed your belief into. Yeah, yeah, then it's, it was probably very. It's very hard. It's very hard to change a winning. It's very hard for any management or any to, turn or, away from to say, "Oh, we're not going to kick the ball in. Yeah. We're not going to feed these two men yeah. in here, destroying everybody." Yeah. And for us, we were going right. They're not going to change because why? Why would why you would, change? Yeah. Why would like if your your if your club team won by ten points to four? Yeah. On the Sunday, you're hardly going to say, "Hey, boy, we're, we're going to change it. We're going to change it here." So we kind of knew that, and we probably felt Big Joe and uh, Justy. Justy, we felt, look, they're going to lump it in. These two men will go, and we felt with, we knew we were going to have to bring an edge that we yeah. never ever, even in 05, 03, because we knew we had to bring an edge, but we knew maybe we we had some footballers to back it, but we knew ourselves because these boys were two in a row. Yeah, the confidence was going to be high, yeah. everything was going, and we said, we're going to have to bring an edge. And I think Joe and Justin brought an edge, maybe they'd be two male monitored men, but they brought an edge. <laughs> what I was ever saying, we, we had all beards, which I still haven't shaved off. I know, but yeah, you're still living that away I'm, if you're... I'm still living that, I'm still living <laughs> that dream, mate. The, the, the dream never dies, but we had probably fed, we had fed into a thing that, and probably what suited us, that no one expected us to be there. Like and mm. Tyrone, we got an, like we got beat by down after a replay, and I think I gave away a bad goal after extra time, dropped the ball in, and I were being kicked pillar to post in Tyrone, and we were told we were done. I think a lot of boys went out for a lot of drinks after the game, and you were getting pillared for going out for drinks after the game. People were saying you need to look at yourself after getting beat, and a lot of people they probably look at GA players and say, oh. You got beat while you're taking a few drinks and the they last don't know you need to blow off the fucking steam after losing the And then game. you're kinda of going this, but then even our qualifiers, we should have we struggled every game. We struggled against West Me. Oh, it was a struggle <sighs> with the qualifiers and ten I mean Desi Dolan missed a chance just at the end five minutes. And Jesus Desi. You could <laughs> have buried I, him first. And I looked and he kicked it wide and I kinda of looked and I'll never forget Brian to hear the two of us looked at each other and kinda of went Okay. He says, we got away with one, and uh, I mean, someone saying to me, kind of going, hey, someone put his butt, I mean, at the filling station in Fitna, a wee town beside me, I was filling up, and someone said to me, hey, someone put these boys out of your misery, like, you should go down to Mayo, and we scraped through Mayo by a point, and I met the same fella at the filling station, he goes, we're playing Dublin, and he goes, you're going to get hammered, Dublin are flying, and I says, I, he goes, I'm not going down, it's a bad result. And I said, dead on, you're filling the diesel. We are lucky we got a break, we got an extra week's rest. Okay. We trained like demons. And I, I started sensing something after we trained. I said, geez, we've, we haven't put a session like that. They're real on the edge since 05. Okay. Beat Dublin, we came out, blew Dublin away, but I don't know how many points, we just blew them away. I was filling diesel 
in the same way in the same time. Jesus Christ, you're doing some driving. I was driving all <laughs> over the place. I went, oh, no. I went to this part. He must be taking up personal residence there, he is. He came up to me and goes, hey, wasn't thrown like a funeral. He goes, I don't know what people's getting worried about. He goes, I always had faith We're in you. Win the <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, going, are you mad? They lied to themselves. In oh, like and that. it came back for luck. Throw, we came totally under the we came totally under the radar and look, we had Waxford in the semi final. And Stephen O'Neill was was that the time that Stephen O'Neill kind of came out of the woodwork? He, we were hearing all these rumours on like Stephen O'Neill's back in with the boys. And he was such a good he was such an unbelievable player that you were kinda of like, going, I hope that's not true. Stevie I he came back, must have been a couple of weeks before. Yeah. I think Mickey had floated the idea with yeah. the players, and in fairness, the boys. Oh, you're like winning in all Ireland. You know how good Stephen O'Neill is. Bring him in. We're gonna take and like but yeah. Like you always, you're always aware as you like as a player for myself. Like you were, you were starting, or you were, you were, and you were playing every game. But yeah, you, you kind of had to float it to 21, 22, 23. Yeah, you do. Yeah, and you always have to take there. And in fairness, the boys, the boys came up and said, "Boys, we want to win this. We want to win this. We like, want to win absolutely this. every chance possible." And, and that's that's the sign of a good together team. That if they're not, if if number twenty three isn't going, hold well, on, no. Stephen Neal come back, he might take my place. I don't want this at all. No. Whereas, no. like, it has to be the bigger picture and at that I think, stage. I think Owen Mulligan, Owen was on the bench at that stage and he, and he wasn't getting on. And I think Owen came out and he spoke. He says, well, look, boys, he's one of us. Yeah. And he says, I, I want him here. And yeah. Once that was said, we go, rock your way. He away. came on and gave, he, he, like, I always, like, like, you look at big games and you look at how close that game is. If you look at the save by, pa uh, by Packy Pac yeah, on, yeah. on Declan Sullivan, yeah. his stud turns that around the post. That's, the, that's probably us winning the game. You go back to Doher's point up the sideline, side which is one of the greatest points of all time in the GA in my eyes. But like, with all the training and with all the focus and all the preparations, like it's amazing that it still comes down to these little inches and these little, these tiny little things in games. It's the small things, and I'm in chasing after Declan was all of, and I was kind of going, we're trying to go, and I was behind him, and I was going, this man's going to score yeah. this, and next thing I look, and all I can see, he shot, and I was kind of going. I was kind of, I was trying to look round, right, next thing I went round the post. Yeah, it actually went, I was behind, I was not far behind, I went around, it actually did come, whatever way these stood, it kind of spun around the post. Oh, but. and I was kind of going, I was looking at him, I, came, I went running up to him, I says, what are you big? Yeah, and yeah, he kind of, I says, yeah. I couldn't believe it. And, and he was only on because, I, I, um, I John Devine's father, dead, he, he, died he, night, he, 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 passed, he passed, he passed away, before it was the, Very sad. It was it was a night before. It was a night before, night before. John, John had the, he got the news. You know he was sick, so it was, it was hard for us. But and then we had that probably extra motivation too going in to the game, and we were kind it'd of going, be un, it'd be unspoken, but it'd be there. Is that, look, we'll do you this. Want to do it from? And like we had talked, and look, probably going into the game against for us, we said, look, this is a chance to get back, probably to redeem ourselves from 06, 07. Like we had won Ulster in 07, and we thought we were back, and me came out of the woodwork and I actually got the worst roasting of my life in Croke Park and it was it was hateful to be there and you were kind of going but we were just seeing this Kerry team I know a lot of the media said this is going to be uh, for team of the decade and so go on who was the team of the decade Tyrone <laughs> <laughs> straight up <laughs> straight up now for me we had never really discussed it that much and it was kind we of we don't either but fuck it we're discussing it now no. <laughs> For me, I'd say, like, he's won four in the day. Five. five, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget that one. I don't forget no, that one. But yeah, no, no it, it's five versus three, obviously, but it's it's the fact that you've beaten us in two finals, and you've, you know, it's it's all it's always a, a, a debate, really. And if you look at the teams from, if you take out our 2000 win, yeah, which was a very different team to the to the 04 team, we'll say, doesn't the fellas kind of win from there to there? Um, but it's, it was always, if we'd have beaten you in any of those finals, it's obviously the easiest answer of all time. Yeah. But the fact that we didn't get you in one of them, it's, 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 a, it's a debate that both, both, both. Both camps was going to say, uh, both yeah, camps was going to exactly. say, and which, would, exactly. which would lie with, with me, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be up for it, or saying, oh, that's not, I would say it the slide carry one. Yeah, of course, like, that's the thing, like, we're not going around now, like, oh, we're the team of the decade and this decade. It's, 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 no, it's, it's no thing, but what it really was is, who were the better team carrier, Tyrone? Because we were the crowd that had won. We did all Ireland's between us in yeah. ten years, so you were kind and of. And it was kind of to me. It was. I would have. I always put. Of course, as a throw man, you'd always say you're you're a wee bit above you this year. Yeah. But I would probably look at the two teams, and if you go player from player in each squad, like 
we were pretty much even. Mm. In my eyes, we were pretty much even, like and probably oh wait. In my eyes, you were the better team coming yeah. in, and we were just we were we were just as you got we were hanging poxy, on. We poxy were goal after half time. <laughs> it was it was probably Jesus Christ. It was probably again. It was probably oh one God. of the it, it was one of the worst goals that I ever scored. Oh. <laughs> as I always say, that Tommy McGuigan. Oh, Tommy! Tommy, Tommy always. Tommy, Tommy. Uh, Padraig Ree slipped on the line, and and Darroche was there, and it was ah. Oh. I remember look. You know the way when you're full forward, and I'm sure you were gap. You were the same when you were cornerback, and you're looking down at your team scoring. But when you're full full forward, you're looking down at your team conceding. And I remember looking down that day, kind of going. How did that? Like, and I was looking at the, you know the, the big screen. I was kind of like, please show it again. How like to me, I was like, I couldn't understand how there was a goal at that stage. It I was could, early in the second. It was half, early in the second. It, it got us back. It, it gave us a foothold into the game. Gave you a big and it's a, it's one it of them. The worst ever was after the game, and I won't lie. You know, you've mentioned maybe that you've been up on throne. Yeah. And your father and all yourself, and you probably he was a barrow man. So he was. If you if you'd have stayed if you'd have stayed with the red knights, with the red knights. if you'd have stayed with the barrow red knights, and probably Jet Tracy here, big chairman up on there. <laughs> I think Jet. But uh, if you'd have stayed with the red knights, maybe how do you think would you fit it in? Would you think you would have? Yeah, I I I I'm I'm pretty sure I put it in my book that if I was. Uh, Full forward and the, and and the Tyrone team where I was in around Muggsy and Peter Kenavan and these fellas I could have, of course, d done a job. But would I have? Would I have made it like basketball? Wouldn't be that big up there necessarily. No. Whereas I, you know, I a lot of my ba I attribute a lot of my basketball and truly to get an Carry team eventually. You know, but, uh, but more, I think but my how long more importantly would you fit it in? Maybe if we're going out for a night out, that's the more important thing. Do you think? Or? Well, considering <laughs> myself and Joe McMahon, who I hated after the away final, and when he'd beard and roar in Tommy Walsh's face, and then I'm out in Australia, and I'm kind of like going, yeah, I'd go into war with this for any day. Like I'd just seen him in action. I, you know, as soon as we played Australia, I saw him roaring in Ozzy's face, like, and I got a bit of a G up from it, and I was like. This is what these Tyrone boys are at all the time. Like if they're all at it, and then when they're all at it, like because you were all at it, you were at it. Garmley was at it. Philly Jordan was at it. You turned over a ball. You were roaring. And could I be blow full forward, roaring Jan, telling you go on, Ricey, give it to him. Absolutely, I could see myself doing it. So uh, the the the, the bearer at night, I probably would have ended up actually playing with all my Saint Indians. So I probably would have. I was in the class. I was in class with Joe McMahon when I was five. When I lived up there for a year in Oma. So I was in his actual class. Uh, we only found that out when we were out in Australia. But absolutely, I think I could have. I think I could have fitted in. I think I could have fitted in. You might tell me better, but I think I could have. I, fitted, think, I, I think I could have fitted in there. I, I, I think you could fit it in the best. Talk, I think the trash talk to cope with, <laughs> with club football in Tyrone. I'd say I'd probably be killing a few club games, but we'd. we'd oh well, I've survived, so it's alright. Yeah. <laughs> the Jameson Castmates and Tonics Social Serve Series on Off the Ball.